This is different. This is different. This is different. This is the revolutionary album. credibility in this particular exchange now. And that's because he described him as a creepy ass cracker? Yes. So it was racial, but it was because Trayvon Martin put race in this. No. You don't think that's a racial comment? No. You don't think that creepy ass cracker is a racial comment? No. Uh, the ultimate goal that these people have in mind, have in mind. is the goal to uh, create a one world government, a one -world government. Mm -hmm. run by the banking industry, run by the bankers, run by the bankers. Right? There'll be, no there be no more cash. And this is giving me straight from Rockefeller himself. This is what they want to accomplish. They want to accomplish. He's the one who told me uh, 11 months before 9 11 ever happened that there was going to be an event. Never told me what the event was going to be. But there was going to be an event. There was going to be an event. And, it's, and there's going to be this war on terror, of which there's no real enemy. And the whole thing is a giant hoax. You know, but it's a way for the government to take over the American people. 9-11 was done by people in our own government and our own banking system to perpetuate, to perpetuate the fear of the American people and to subordinating themselves to anything the government wants them to do. That's what it's about, and to create this war, this endless war on terror. You cannot have people disrespecting our national anthem, our flag, our country. Man, what the fuck? 
Here's you not knowing White people massacred the natives and they started growing Built a system to keep down the little man I ain't crying like a bitch I'm just saying, man, this shit's real out here If you a darker complexion, you better do the speed limit through that intersection I guess you gotta really live this shit to see the connection And if you don't, you don't get to second guess it Ass backwards, false patriotic cowards Doing backflips over Kaepernick's protest Hypocrites like that bitch in the White House Trump ain't a man, he's more like a fucking mouse Built for little hands, narrow-minded puppet fans You just a little man and Trump's like the middle man For closet racist, billionaire homophobes I'm sick of your ignorance, dude, you act like you know You got scammed more than the Taj Mahal, damn I'm not surprised when half the population vote And most view democracy as a fucking joke A system rigged just to shit on its own kids America, land of the fuckery Where a pedophile gets less Jail time did me for selling drugs Ain't that about a bitch They took freedom and made it only for the rich Then took health care and did the same shit But we too brainwashed to see the bait and switch Which is really sad, got us fighting each other While the billionaires are pulling the country under I love America enough to call out the flaws So we can make it better, not just build stupid walls Yeah, that's the best you got, simple tins You ain't got a job, so you blame it on the Mexican we got war, so you blame it on the Taliban Scapegoats for politician deep throats It's pure smoke, and you can't smell the fire I love my Uncle Sam, but he's a goddamn liar Anything to make a buck, he don't give a fuck Shit, could blow a whole country up Yeah, the homie Halliburton, oh what's up? They let our tax money, cause we just give it up It's free money, no cap bids on our kids' money Star Spangled Banner built off free slave money Blood money Kennedy's head money, America's a dirty bitch, only out for the money Because we let her, the people will even vote Too busy YouTube and sitting back drinking coke I ain't here to roast, just point shit out You ain't woke cause you online my quotes Kneeling is not about a flag It is about the degree to which African American people and other people of color Are continually uh, put upon by police people who do not ultimately respect them the respect issue is right, except in this case, it has to do with African-American people who are being mistreated by the police and other forms of noxious racism and discrimination that persist. It was a war on drugs and then a war on thugs. When they run out of reasons, bet they war on us. You really think they care about the color born on us? Nah, we're all just collateral damage because part of the planet's misunderstanding creates division. And once we are divided, chances are we don't listen. Things might change when it is us against the system or they sell us like slaves Maybe we start to think different then they still talking about the left and the right I want to talk about the brains and who's controlling the flight I need to know who's at the wheel if I'm paying them wages and if they stick to a script who created those pages so many stages and a stockpile of actors they say that I am crazy cause I'm pointing out the trap doors to double talk expected no more no less can't say it ain't a con what's the opposite of progress funny shit we got a money pit now overall we need an overhaul, not a border wall. Call this a kind of sort of call to arms for non sheep, not asleep peeps protecting their farms whose weapons get drawn to defend what's fact and what's right. I give a damn if it's black or it's white. I prefer my protection to be natural selection, second guessing the election, regardless of who the winner is. The president is only meant to preside, just a face for the space where corporations decide who gets what, where they can get it, how much it costs. The game is meant for them to gain, it's meant for us to take a loss i never claim to be a boss i'm the 99 percent the employee at your job is doing work while he vents folks looking at me odd like i'm giving off a scent might be they upper lips since they brown nose and kiss ass and since they kiss ass and brown nose jim jones is the bartender so i let them down those mix drinks as they congregate and swap spit the one percent fooled us into thinking we ain't got shit we got numbers and we got motivation if the talk is taboo then we need them conversations that will Calm down the rage, get us on the same page, or we'll share the same cage when the shit hits the fan, man. Let me tell you who disrespects the flag. A man who stands up and lies daily. Let me tell you who disrespects the flag. A man who would get in bed rhetorically and symbolically 
with a person who has been seen as an enemy of the American state, Vladimir Putin. Let me tell you who disrespects the flag. A man who foments dissent uh, against the precious ideals of American society, who embraces neo-Nazis as equal to people who oppose them. That is the subversion of American anthems and flags. A flag is a piece of cloth unless it is backed up by the high ideals and the noble aspirations for which this country fought and in which it has continued to bleed in order to realize the best for everybody. So when NFL players take a knee, they are not disrespecting a flag. They are not disrespecting an anthem. They instead are going down to make us rise up, to make us look up at the ambitions we hold dear that should be applied to everybody. And right now they're not. This is the revolutionary album. Sorry, we got cut off earlier, but you know, things happen, technical problems. But... I am glad I restarted it the way I restarted it because that song right there by Fanboy Mega Mitz featuring Lee Earl right there is the epitome of what is actually going down in this society today. And one thing that I'm glad he said was at the end when he said that the NFL players are not kneeling to disrespect the flag. They're kneeling to make you look up at the, 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 the issues that we are being faced now. I am glad that, that he put that in there this is an older song. I want to make sure y'all understand this. This is an older song. But over the weekend, Roger Gardell, the, the, the man who runs the NFL, came out and said they should have listened to their players. Their players was right. Now, that says a lot. That says a lot. That says so much that, that, that that's your boss that at your job coming to you and telling you that the reason why he fired you was wrong. And not only do he uh, 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 want you to come back to work for him, but he wants to give you a better position. He wants to give you more money. That's, to me, that's what that sounds like. And I hope that's what happens for Colin and, and the other NFL players that got wrongly uh, punished for actually standing up for something. But, you know, that ain't what we're here to talk about tonight. What we're here to talk about tonight is the reason why they was kneeling. Because I don't know if y'all remember, but it, it five years ago with Baltimore, Mr. Gray, Freddie Gray, lost his life over some pettiness. I don't know if y'all remember a few years ago, Philando Castile lost his life over some pettiness. Or maybe Tamir Rice that died, the 12-year-old that died by the hand of a police because that cop was afraid of a toy gun because it, Tamir Rice and his friends was outside playing cops and robbers. And to this day, we still don't know if Tamir Rice was playing the cop. So, in my opinion, if he was, that's cop on cop crime. Shouldn't they take that a little bit more seriously since they won't take Cop on black crime seriously But That I digress Right now we are in the midst of Another turmoil That I haven't talked about yet And that's George Floyd The man who Had his airway Obstructed by A policeman's knee For nearly nine Minutes now, we already know that scientifically, a person can only hold their breath for approximately three to four minutes before they need some kind of oxygen or the oxygen starts affecting the brain. The, the lack of oxygen starts affecting the brain. But it seems in this equation that a lack of oxygen didn't affect George Floyd's brain as much as it did the person who had his knee on his throat. It seems that the one that we falsely call an officer wasn't really thinking and his uh, 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 and this is not an excuse this is not a defense because just hear me out he wasn't thinking in his humane train of thought no he was thinking in his police train of thought he was thinking this is how I was trained this black man is a part of a society of thugs and criminals and they must be dealt with accordingly this is the police training and I don't care what anybody how anybody says it I, I, I understand there's 
great men and women out there who put on the police uniform. But it, 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 it has to be bigger than that. You can't just be a good man and woman who puts on a police uniform. You have to be a good cop. But see, uh, now when that, that terminology has hit me very, very hard since learning about the history of the police. You know, they used to be slave catchers. They used to catch us slipping. Where you supposed to be at, boy? Oh, you ain't got no owner? You got, you got an owner now. They went from that to George Floyd. Now, if George Floyd is going to be the catalyst to set this bitch off, then I guess that's just what it is. And as much as I really don't want to see us burning down our own shit, I really don't see us burning down our own shit. I really don't. Even the black-owned stores aren't really black-owned. They're black. They're they're funded by banks. They're funded by the federal Res- uh, banks that are owned by the Federal Reserve, which is a European corporation. <laughs> like so, when you really think about a black-owned business, I own a black-owned business. And I'm not trying to knock any black-owned business out there. I support all black-owned businesses. But hear me out. Every product that I sell, I bought with my own fiat currency. Meaning that no one can come and take this. My pro- can't take none of my product. Saying that since I owe them and I'm in debt, they're going to confiscate this. No, they cannot. They cannot confiscate anything in my house except for my house. And that's because I rent this motherfucker. We don't own shit. The building that the stores are in that are getting burnt down. I hate to see people lose their life's work. But see, this is why I've been saying for years, we need to handle this in a certain kind of way. I've been saying this for years. I was hoping that it wouldn't get to this. Nobody listens to me, though. Which makes me wonder why I keep doing these damn podcasts. But hey. It is what it is. But I recall years ago promoting the Buy the Block uh, movement that Slim Thug and a few other rappers was talking about. doing. Now think about that. We bought the block. We would have been able to tell the police we don't want your presence around here. Because if you go into certain neighborhoods, you go over there into the little plazas or whatever with the corner store, the barbershop, little food, uh, soul food restaurant here, laundry mat, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about, the hood plazas, you feel me? You got those stores that aren't ran by black people, owned by Asians, owned by Indians and Palestinians and so on and so forth in the hood. And you will see that they have this orange sign saying, that the police are welcome here. In so many words, that's what it says. But what it's saying is that if you niggas fuck up, I'm going to call the police. And they have every right. I, I'm giving them every right to come in here and do what they do. This is what makes the George Floyd murder a lot. It, it makes it complicated because, yes, that store owner had reserved the right to call the police if he felt like something was wrong. And it warranted the police. But this is where it gets tricky. When you are being told that the black community are thieves, thugs, killers, so on and so forth, you look at all of them like that. As we look at each other. We talked about that on one episode. We'll talk about it again. But they see us as the element that needs to be exterminated. So when we go into their stores, of course they're watching us. Of course they're following us. Of course they're hurry up and buy. Hurry up and buy. You break, you buy. You break, you buy. They don't say that shit to them white people. <laughs> Trust me, I know. I know. Been in a situation. Mm. So, this is where it gets tricky because the owner of the store, he actually states that he didn't want that to happen. Matter of fact, it wasn't even the owner of the store that called the police. It was the clerk. Because he thought the $20 bill was a counterfeit $20 bill. Turned out it wasn't. But even if it was a $20, a counterfeit $20 bill, did that cause for George Floyd to lose his life? 
No, it wasn't. So why did he lose his life? He lost his life because of two things. The training of the police department. And ignorance. And what I mean by ignorance, ignorance of anything. And in this case, it was the police ignorance of what kind of health conditions cannot be placed in a certain arresting position. People with pulmonary heart or hypertension or any other kind of arterial, cardiac, or respiratory problems, you're supposed to handcuff them in the front. Now I'm not saying that's not in a that's that, that's in a code. I'm, I'm not saying I'm saying this from personal opinion. And the reason why I say that from personal opinion is because of the personal uh, because of the knowledge that I obtained about those, you know, diseases. If you actually research them, you'll find out that certain diseases you cannot have your hands tied behind your back. That is just not supposed to happen. And no one should have the airway cut off because of a knee to their throat. Nobody. Nobody. So, what do we do about it? Because we've been talking about problems like this for decades. And we still ain't done nothing about it. Excuse me, I'm lying. We have. We've marched. We protest. We rioted. We even ran for a couple of positions uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the political system. And I, I don't think we used them right. I mean, come on now. We have a black congressional caucus that's part of the Democratic Party. That's also, uh, the Democratic Party is also the party of the slave master. So um, when I see the black congressional caucus, sorry if you get upset with me. But I, I kind of see, the, the, you know, Samuel L. Jackson from Jane, Django. Or Uncle Ruckus, you know, pick one. I don't give a fuck. Because if they really want to change, they wouldn't be running as Democrats. They wouldn't have been running as Democrats. Like, don't get me wrong, I know it probably was an effective so on and so forth uh, method. But you have a lot of different congressional sections out there that is predominantly black that I don't think they care whether you ran for Republican, Democrat, or Independent. As long as you was talking about helping the community, then, you know, people will put you in that position. But see, what is going on now is that police reform is actually a thing now. It, it, it is a thing. It's, it's being put, a police and criminal reform is uh, in a process of uh, being taken care of. True, we have a hater in the, in the, in the over office. Or excuse me, not the over office, but in the bunker up under the White House. Go figure. He, 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 he is the biggest obstruction. But see, this is the thing. If a president vetoes a bill, then the House and the Senate can come together and unveto that deal. Meaning that if they decide, decide they want to change uh, the training of the police department nationwide, uh, they have that power to do that. So that's why I think it's real fucking funny how the Democratic Party... Decided to kneel in protest on George Floyd on the day George Floyd was laid to rest with Kente fucking scarf on. I don't know how to feel about that. I really don't. And the reason why I say that is because how should I feel about that? How should I feel about people who are I feel taking advantage of our uh, heritage, taking advantage of. Um, you know what? Let me reword that. How the fuck is the people we protesting going to protest with us? Just change the shit. We don't need you on your knees. We need you in that motherfucking chambers fixing the goddamn problems that we are facing. We're doing the kneeling. We do, we, we wear the mud cloths and the kente wraps. We wear the... The, the, the different African attires that I could go on and, and, and name all day long. I got the paperwork right here. But let me let me see what I let's name off real quick. We got a uh, solid kente. Then we got red, white, uh, and with Chris. We also got the kente accessory set. We also got the kente tots uh, set. We have the kufi. Don't nobody even know about the kufi. They know about the kente because the kente is very popular. But do you even know anything about? Anything else other than kente? Do you know about the mud cloth colors and the design choices? Do you know what the designs mean? 
This is what I'm saying. I really feel like I, I disrespected by them doing that. But I understand the sentiment. If the sentiment was genuine. Now, if you're just trying to get a, them, Joe Biden in um, the office, I, I, uh, uh, I know y'all want Trump out, but dude, uh, I don't know. Something about Biden just don't sit well with me. But that ain't why we're here to talk. This police reform, how do we go about doing it? Well, one of the things that has been going on that people have been talking about is defunding the police department. But I don't think y'all really know what that means. Really, I don't think y'all really know what that means. I think you think defunding the police department means putting them out of business. And that's not what that means. You know, if if Because it, it is a business. Don't get me wrong. The police department is a business. But defunding the police department won't put them out of business. So let's discuss exactly what defunding the police department is. And by doing that, first we need to understand that it does not mean eliminating all of the police funding. What it means is that the police will still get funding. They just won't be overfunded. They won't have tanks. They won't have bazookas. They won't have fucking military grade weaponry on U.S. soil when they're supposed to be protecting U.S. citizens from other U.S. citizens. Meaning that they are not allowed to wage war against the United States citizens. It also means to the redistribute the city budget. Meaning that if you give it $12 million a year to the police department in a city where the crime rate is considerably going down and not because of the police presence, then it's time to start reallocating that money. Now, why do you say we should reallocate that money? Why should everybody else get a fair share? Who is this everybody else? Well, think about it. When you have an autistic child, 17 years old, don't understand what a cop is, don't understand what a gun is, don't understand what yelling commandments at him, it, w w all he understands is the confusion and that's going on. And on top of that, he's in the shower. He don't know nothing, but he's taking a bath. He's focusing on that. But yet he loses his life in that shop, that same shower, by a police bullet. This goes back to what I was saying in one of my posts where calling 911 don't mean you calling the police. 911 is for an emergency. So if there was a real emergency with this autistic child, Shouldn't there, shouldn't there have been a counselor or a social worker show up? Why did they bring the police? By bringing the police, this autistic child has lost his life. So when you defund the police, when you take some of that $12 million a year and you redistribute it, on mental health counselors, social workers, medical professionals, educational specialists, then that takes the responsibility of the police off. It, it, it lightens that load. So that they can focus on crimes and criminals, while at the same time, being retrained not to think racially or psychologically that there is an enemy out there that you're waging war against. You are not the fucking military. So take some of that money from them. Add more social workers. Add more medical professionals and education specialists. And I guarantee you'll see a change. See, now me, this is actually new information uh, that I came across. And I like it. 
But I still like my original plan better. My original plan states that, think about it, it's the police force who were in, created to catch slaves. They was created to catch slaves. That's what the police force was for. Before the police force, there was the sheriff department, the only legal constitutional law enforcement agency out there. That's why they're called peace officers. Because the sheriff is actually elected to an office to help keep the peace. That is not what the police job is. The police job, as deemed by the Supreme Court, is not to protect and serve the United States citizens, but to protect and serve the corporations. This is per the United States Supreme Court. I, look it up. It's very easy to look this up because it's all it, it was all over in two thousand. I believe it was two thousand four, when a woman, her mother, lost her children to her estranged husband because the police didn't act on a call of when he kidnapped the children. Because he, I know what you're thinking. How can he kidnap his own children? Well, when there's a restraining order against you, then you're not supposed to be around these people. So if you come and get some children that you're not supposed to be around, that's kidnapping. The police said it was not in their power. They just didn't have enough resources to, you know, take care of it. So when the woman sued, when the mother sued, because the man, the father pulled up to the police station with all the children in the trunk of the car dead, she didn't get any justice. None. And she is without her children to this day. What would have been a better situation then? In this case, you would need law enforcement. So since a restraining order, according to the Supreme Court, does not mean that the police have to respond. It just means that the person has to stay away. That's just like saying, uh, don't burn down the forest, but you can leave the fire unattended. Nigga, what? That made no damn sense. At all. At all. See, now when you defund the police department, what else is that going to do? Besides act adding more jobs, more qualified, skillful, educational jobs, what else does that do? Well, I can guarantee you that it emphasizes a reassessment of our values. It makes the police look at us in, in a different way. Like I was saying, it, it, it changes the narrative from minorities being the enemy to the United States citizens being the subjects we're protecting. It also means investing in our communities, which I have been saying for freaking decades. That not, not decades, years, excuse me. But that, that, I even mentioned it earlier. We don't own shit. So when we burn this shit down, it, we're not burning our own shit down. We're burning the shit down that we built for them. So now that it's burnt down, let's rebuild it for us. So I, under, I understand and I agree with all the protesters and the rioters out there burning this shit down. We built it. We burn it. How them agents say it? You break, you buy. You break, you buy. We already bought this shit. We already bought this shit. So we're going to break it, god damn it. And we're going to break it so that you can't fix it. We're going to break it so that you have to rebuild it from scratch. And by that, we'll be investing in our own communities. Then we'll be investing in our own people because we won't just let Officer Billy Joe Jean from over there in the suburbs come over here and tell us how life is supposed to be in the ghetto. We won't have that. So we will be investing in our own people by taking the thugs and retraining them to be law enforcement officers 
Because everybody knows the root of crime is poverty. Take the people who know poverty best and put them in charge of protecting the people who are in poverty. And I guarantee you, you'll see a different, different, different stroke. How do I know this? Black Panther Party. How you think WIC got started? WIC, Women, Infant, and Children. Guess who started that? Oh, you ain't know? The Black Panther started that. Yes, they did. Research it. We also will be reinvesting in our schools. Now, I don't believe in burning down the schools, but hey, sometimes it just depends on how old that school lives. It may be just the best way to rebuild it is by burning it down. And I'm talking about in a plant deconstruction to reconstruction way. I ain't talking about just going to throw in a Molotov cocktail or, or how they said it on the, uh, on the news the other day, uh, 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 a, Matov, a Matov cocktail. <laughs> Like this is a Jewish riot or something. <laughs> oh man. But you, while investigating our schools, we also need to invest in our hospitals because we have our county hospitals are getting, the, the nurses there are getting paid damn near nothing. And it's funny because they have to start off there in order to make a name for themselves so that they can go work at a private hospital that takes certain insurances that will not accept certain people in their own emergency room because they ain't got no insurance. This is why they send them to the the, uh, the county. Now, the county, I, I, see, this is how I, I would feel about the hospitals, but again, this is another topic for another story. All hospitals should be county or at least state or some kind of government ran facility. I don't know the whole details about that. That's why I say it, it got to be another another show, but that's just something we need to think about. But we also will be able to fund our own services because I ran across an uh, ad. On Facebook, and I know what y'all talking. About. I had on Facebook. Oh, this is gonna be rich. It's full of, it's full of freaking fucking uh, truth. Uh, it may not be, but it brought up a good point. And I, I forgot what it is. I think it's called. It, part of people call water guys or water dudes or whatever, whatever. Anyways, you stop the person that's taking the shower. You know, the person that's not taking the shower. You turn around and be like, hey, stop taking the shower. First of all, nigga, why is you looking at me while I'm naked? <laughs> Second of all, what the fuck do you want, and why are you in my bathroom? So he goes on to say, the, the dude that pulls the dude out the bathroom goes on to talks about the contaminants that's in our water. Now I know y'all know anything about Southside Beauty Care, our business over here, uh, where we sell natural uh, soaps and uh, Black African soaps and uh, shea butters, uh, mango butters, aloe butter, shea aloe butters. You go, you name it, we all we got. It. All these skin products that will help your skin fight off that hard water. But he made a good point when he was saying that there are certain contaminants. Not just a lot, but there are certain contaminants in our water system that could be filtrated out very, very easily. So the ad was, of course, to sell an ad for trace, uh, a water filtration system to people who own their houses. But what the fuck are we going to do about people who are renting apartments? We need somebody to help with that. We need somebody who's going to be able to go around to these apartment complex and get the water good. I'm great. I'm, I'm glad I picked this apartment. This apartment here has a water filtration system. It has the city water filtration system, which is trash. But then it has an extra water filtration system on it that the, the new owners didn't even know about. So guess what they decided to do? Add on another water filtration system. So I'm over here sipping on some ice. Some, some fucking ice water. <laughs> Real straight out the faucet. I'm lucky. Not everybody else is lucky. Especially in government housing. You would think government housing would have they, 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 they shit tip top. But it doesn't. So this is where we have to actually look at. Where is this money going to? Well, I can tell you that easily when I see tanks rolling down the street with the police emblem on them, not the National Guard emblem, not the United States uh, military emblem, not the Marine emblem, the Army emblem, or, or the Navy emblem, but the police department. 
the glorified fucking security guards. Yes, I said that. I'm not trying to disrespect any good man and woman who gets up every morning trying to make a difference. But I got to call it what it is. It is United States security guards. Because of the slavery, they wanted to make sure the slavery stayed in uh, contact, uh, not contact, but stayed in uh, order. And not only stayed in order, but when we they, they lost control of the slaves, they had to keep control of the slaves some kind of way with the Jim Crow laws. And if you look at the Jim Crow laws and compare them to today's laws, you actually see that, yeah, they the same fucking thing. <laughs> For real, they're the same fucking laws. The same. I mean, I don't know how else to explain it.